My name is Presla Nyaba. Um, I'm a passionate advocate of adolescent sexual and reproductive health and rights. The project seeks to improve young people's access to adolescent sexual and reproductive health services and information, uh, providing young people with youth-friendly services. Child marriage is something which must be abolished in our various communities. Because if a child is not up to the age of 20 and then the child gets pregnant and you give the child to her, she will face challenges in her life which will may contribute to her downfall, which will cause depression and emotional stress. And this may not contribute to the development of the community. We also used storytelling approach where we identified victims of child marriage and teen mothers within the communities whom we empowered to be able to speak in public, to share their stories among their peers and that we are able to discuss or initiate discussions around some of these issues for the community members to really understand some of the consequences that these young people go through. People felt uh, empathy for these young girls and people were moved to make commitments, especially the chiefs that participated in some of these uh, uh, sensitization meetings, to say that they really have to come out with clear plans of how they will protect their girls in the community. And these stories are meant to inspire others. These stories are meant to be able to create that connection between people from different context different countries because storytelling is a very key uh, tool that we can use to do this connection around the world. And you feel the emotions, you feel all the, all the suffering that the young people go through. In our culture, the women do not really have a say when it comes to giving a child out for marriage. It's the men that usually have the final say. But this women group says that um, they've had it, it is enough. They will not sit down and watch for their young girls or their young uh, children to be given out to child marriage. And so, and we think that going forward, that can be a sustainability uh, plan and that the project can live on even if we exit from the community. <laughs> From January up to December, we were able to intervene in eight, 88 of these cases. And these girls, some of them are back in school. Some have also enrolled to learn a skill. Mostly, grassroots organizations do not have that ability to hire people with high skills or high uh, uh, qualifications to assist them in their operations. So I think the funding is more unique and uh, I encourage that more donors should go um, and into this way of funding young people. More than four staff of this organization have benefited from the technical support company where they have been able to have trainings in various areas uh, including behavior change communication, monitoring evaluation, and I think that um, this accelerator has been so helpful to us. The accelerator funding is, is one of a kind that cannot be compared to any funding at all. Sebikos has identified that young people at the grassroots level really need this support. They, they know that we are capable of um, 
making the change that we are all looking for in terms of contributing to the sustainable development goals. A lot of opportunities have also come our way. Um, currently, we have secured some funding from UNICEF to implement similar projects in six districts in Upper East Region. And this time around, we are covering 30 communities with the same project. Apart from localizing the SDGs, I think that uh, resources like time, money, uh, should be channeled through programs that are designed at accelerating these SDGs. And much focus should be um, forwarded to young people because I think that young people of recent have that passionate to make that change that we all uh, desire to see. And so donors should channel their funds through the youth-led organizations if they want us to achieve the, the, the sustainable development goals.